Hey, seventh graders, welcome to our summer science program. This is our first week of summer school. It's our first lesson. This is me. Um, I'm Miss Wisowski. You're also welcome to call me Miss S. Um, this is what I look like. Uh, today, I'm going to go over the programs that we're going to be using in summer school. I'm going to teach you how to log in. I'm going to teach you how to use them. And then we're going to start off with our first lesson. I'm going to be giving you a summary of the first two lessons that you have to learn. So let's get started. All right, let's start off with daily expectations for summer school. So these are things you're doing every single day, Monday through Friday, till we are done on July 31st. So the first thing that you're going to do is check in on Schoology conferences so I can mark you present. This is really important because your presence in the class will be counted as a grade. So every day you show up for class, you automatically get a grade. Also, if you are absent, um, on the fourth time you're absent, you'll be dropped. So you get three excuse absences. Once you use up those three, I have to drop you from the course. So I don't want that to happen. All right, so after you check in, you're going to listen to the daily assignment. So every day we will have a task that I need you to complete. Then after you get the daily assignment for the day, you're going to read on grad point and complete a five question quiz on grad point. If you're like, huh? What is grad point? Don't panic. I will let you know how to access it and use it later on in this lesson. Okay, so let's hop into getting into grad point because this is a new program for you. It's new to me. So what you're going to do is on Schoology's, you're going to click on materials. It's going to look like this. Um, if you're in grade 7.2, you're going to have a slightly different page, but the material is pretty much the same. So click on materials, click on grad point links underneath materials. It's the blue folder. Okay, when you click on that, it's going to pop up as another folder, which says school 72 summer hub. I want you to click on that and it's going to take you to another page, which is a link. And I want you to click on that link. Okay, and that will take you to grad point. Now you cannot get into grad point any other way. So you cannot Google grad point. You have to, have to, have to use this link. I don't know why, it's just the way it is. If you log in through Google or another link, you're not gonna be able to get into our grad point. So please use the link on Schoology. Once you get to grad point, your username is going to be your 900 student number and your password is going to be your regular login that you use to access your laptop, the password you use for Clever, Prodigy, any Buffalo Public School password um, is going to be the same. And I believe your 900 number should be on your parent portal. Let me know if you have issues logging into that. Okay, so like I said, grad point is new. So let me just explain a few important things. So if you are in the 9 a.m. class, you are Swistowski Section 1. So you want to click Swistowski Section 1, Grade 7, Life Science. Okay, if you are in the 10.25 a.m. class, you are in Swistowski Section 2, the one I circled in blue. This is my login when I log into grad point, so I'm only a science teacher, so you might have some extra courses depending on what you're taking for summer school this year, but please remember 9 a.m. class is section 1, 10.25 class is section 2. All right, so we've got 20 days of summer school, and we have three units that we need to finish on grad point. And grad point is a little different because in order for you to move along in the slides, you need to pass a five question quiz. So let's say you miss the first three days of school and you decide to hop in. You can't just join me where I am. You have to go and read and pass the quizzes to move on. Um, when you take a quiz, you have two chances to take the quiz. Um, if you fail both chances, you have to contact me and I have to push you forward. Um, so that will take time and I don't want you to lose time on the quizzes. So really read and pay attention when you're reading on grad point. I will give you an overall summary. Um, make sure that you are reading that as well as you can because you only have two chances to take the quiz. So again, you can't skip ahead. You need to pass the quiz to move forward, to move forward in the units. It's almost like a game, right? Like you can't 
progress to the next level, unless you fill it, finish all the challenges in this level, grad points the same thing. However, it's going to be very easy to fall behind if you're not working every day, or let's say you have to miss a day or two, you're not catching up on the weekends. So make sure that you are keeping up with the pace because we only have 20 days and we've got a bit of work to finish before then. Okay, so for my science class, you have two options to on what to do every day. So option one is that you check in on Schoology count, Conference to be counted for attendance. Remember, attendance will be for a grade, and if you don't show up, you get dropped from the course. Then you will stay on Schoology Conference to go through the grad point summary with me. And this is just basically like an outline I'm putting, putting together for you guys with the main points. Then you're going to take the quiz on grad point before the next class. Remember, you can't move on with me unless you take the quiz to the next, uh, let's call it level. Or you can do option two, which is you check in on Schoology Conference to be counted for attendance. So either, uh, either option, you have to check in on Schoology Conference. And then you're going to watch my grad point summary on YouTube, and you need to take the quiz on grad point before the next class. So this option two is a little more independent. Um, just the most important thing is that you are checking in on Schoology Conference to be counted. And if you ever need help, you come during your class time on Schoology Conference to ask me questions. But this is, option two is a good option that if you like to do your work later in the evening um, or in the afternoon, just remember, if you want to ask me questions, you have to hop on during our class time and you always, always have to check in. OK, so we're going to get into what's due before we meet again on Tuesday. So this is your task or goal for today. You need to finish the AUP Nearpod. Don't worry, I'll explain what that is. You need to read overview of cells to microscopes on grad point and you need to take the quiz on the overview of the cell and quiz on microscopes on grad point. So you actually have two quizzes to take before Tuesday. Okay, so our first assignment is taking the acceptable use policy on Nearpod. That just says that you're gonna do the right thing on online classes and that you know right from wrong um, and you're gonna be appropriate on our online lessons. So we need to get into Nearpod. So option one, just Google search for Nearpod. It's gonna be the first hit that you get, so click that. Or option two, if you're on Schoology, you can get to Nearpod as well. Find the Nearpod button underneath the course options. Okay, click on it, and it's gonna take you to Nearpod. Now, you are going to enter this specific code, and this is really important, G-A-W-U-M. Enter that into a box that says enter code. Okay, and that's gonna take directly to you that's going to take you directly to the acceptable use policy. Okay, it's going to ask you to give your name. Please enter your first name. Please do not put like DJ Swag123456. Um, I need your full name, not your nickname, because I'm going to give you a grade. And if you don't give me the name that matches the name that I have in my computer, you're not going to get the grad or the grade. So please no nicknames. Okay, and then you're just going to go through that. You're going to go through that Nearpod. You're going to read it, um, do any activities or watch any videos. And again, this just tells me that you are a good digital citizenship and you understand the rules um, for online learning. Basically, anything that you wouldn't do in class, don't do online. And remember that your computers are school computers, so they are not private computers. We can easily get into your computers and see what you're looking at and who you're talking to. So just keep that in mind. Use school computers for school. Okay, so getting into grad point. Um, remember, you're going to use that specific link under materials. And you're going to see all three units like so. Today, I want you to click on unit one, cells and heredity, and it's going to take you to this screen. And I want you to then click on number one, introductions to cells. And today we are going through overview of cells all the way up to quiz microscopes. The rest of this is for Tuesday's lesson. So today we're just concerned with overviews of cells all the way down to microscopes, what I highlighted in yellow, and red is for Tuesday.
if you want to go ahead with red, that's absolutely fine. Just remember that you still need to check in on Schoology conferences so that I can give you a grade for attendance. Okay, just a couple things about GradPoint. Um, again, this is new to me and you. So how do I na navigate GradPoint? Well, if you look down here, you see these little arrows. These are going to be the arrows that are going to move you forward and back in the slide. Um, if you have to leave GradPoint, I would suggest clicking Save and Close. So it saves your spot and it closes you out. And then when you log back in, it'll take you back to that spot. Also, if you have trouble reading or, you know, maybe you struggle with English, I would suggest hitting text to speech and it will read the slides out loud to you. It reads it kind of in a robot voice, but it's better than nothing. Okay. Also, if you get to a page like this and you see these three blue dots, you need to uh, move these dots around because these circles means that there are more slides to look at. So you're going to use these arrows and you have to go through all of the blue dots in order to go on to the next slide. Okay, so use these arrows to move the slide. And if you're ever having trouble navigating in GradPoint, it's probably because there was a button that you didn't click. So if you're having issues moving, um, and you're like, ugh, I read everything on the slide, make sure there's no arrows or anything for you to press. And then once you press that button, um, you can go on. Like for examples, if there's videos, you cannot move on the slide unless you play the video first. So here's an example of things that you might have to press. You see these little red like explosion dots. They're called starburst and you need to, if you see them, you need to click on them and they'll usually give you a picture or some text. All right, so let's go on to the summary of what you guys are learning. Again, this is like an outline that I made for you, okay? So it's best if you read first all of GradPoint, then read the summary, and then use the summary to try to, try to help you take the test. I think that will be the best. So we are on our overview of cells. So all living things are made of cells. If you don't have cells, you are not living. So my computer, no cells, not a living thing. Myself, I'm made of cells, I am living. Smell, so smells. Cells are the smallest part or unit of living things. So that means they're the tiniest building block of living things. So think of it like a teeny tiny Lego that makes up a big tower. Cells are the smallest brick of living things. So. A living thing can actually be made of one cell. One cell can carry out all life's processes or functions for a single cell organism. This includes giving oxygen, converting or changing food into energy, removing waste, and growing. So here is a single celled organism called a protus. So this is uh, seen underneath a microscope. It's found in like pond water. And this little guy can do all of these things, getting oxygen, um, changing food into energy, removing waste from its cell and growing, even though it's just one teeny tiny cell. So you can be considered living even if you're made up of just one cell. Okay, if you are not a single cell organism, like I'm not a single cell organism, you're not a single cell organism. If you look out your window and see a tree, a tree is not a single cell organism. Remember, plants are alive. They're made of cells. So if you have more than one cell, you are called a multi or many celled organism. In multi cell organisms, cells are put together like bricks, like I talked about those Lego bricks. And we call groups of cells that hang out together tissues. We call groups of tissues that hang out together organs. Groups of organs that hang out together are called organ systems and a bunch of organ systems together make up an organism. So let's look at a picture. Um, I've got a picture that goes all the way from the smallest unit, which is a cell, up to the biggest unit, which is an organism. So remember, cells make up tissues, tissues make up organs, organs make up organ systems, and organ systems make up organ organisms. So this is called the levels of organization. Cells is the smallest, organ system is the biggest, and a bunch of organ systems working together make up an organism. An organism is a fancy name for a living thing. I'm an organism, your dog's an organism, a tree's an organism, 
a flower is an organism, anything living can be called an organism. So you may or may not know this, but cells are very small and cannot be seen by the human eye. You need a microscope, which is a tool that magnifies or makes things look larger than they are to see cells. So this is a typical microscope you've seen in your classroom. Maybe you've seen one, maybe you used one before. And there are two types of microscope. There is a single lens, which is a one lens only, or compound microscope with many lenses. Usually in our science class, we'll use a compound microscope. This microscope is a compound microscope because there are three different lenses. Okay, so we're gonna learn a little bit of history. So Robert Hooke invented the first microscope and he built a compound lens microscope. That is a microscope with many lenses. Using his microscope, he looked at cork, which is actually a type of plant, and saw tiny boxes he named cells. So this is a picture of what he probably saw underneath his microscope. So his invention of the microscope helped people learn and discover more about cells. Remember, you can't see cells without a microscope. And so once he invented, invented that microscope and people could look at cells, they started learning more about cells. All right, another important guy is Anton von Leeuwenhoek, and he observed or saw single-celled organisms in pond water and drew them. He called the organisms, which again are living things, that he saw underneath the microscope animacules. So that's not like a word we use in science anymore, but that's a word that he used. And I know it might not seem very impressive that he just drew stuff underneath the microscope, but remember, there was no internet, um, so people relied on pictures to learn more about the world around them. All right, there are two major types of cells, plant and animal cells. So plant cells have a thick, strong cell wall and are shaped like a rectangle. Animal cells do not have a cell wall. So the biggest difference between a plant cell and an animal cell is that cell wall on the plant cell that kind of gives it that boxy shape. And animal cells have a more irregular shape because they don't have that stiff, strong cell wall. All right, more history. Scientist Rudolf Vickrow discovered that all cells must be made from other cells. Now we know this happens because of mitosis, which is a word for cell division. So that's what he looked like. And another important scientist called Matthias Schleiden discovered that plants are made of cells. And I know that doesn't seem impressive right now, but remember, people didn't know much about cells because they couldn't see them. So both men and other scientists came up with the cell theory, which is a set of rules or explanations that help explain the relationship of living things. And again, this might not seem important in this day and age, but remember back then, it was really a big important scientific discovery that helps explain where life comes from. Okay, we're moving on to our second part of the lesson, which is the microscope summary. I know it might seem like I'm going fast, but remember the summary is just an outline. It's just a condensed, short version. So if you're feeling confused, I would suggest going back and reading or rereading what the grad point slides have to say. This is just an outline to help you kind of organize what you've read before you go and take the quizzes. All right, so remember that microscopes are made out of lenses and lenses in a microscope actually bend light to magnify small objects. A type of lens that bends light is called a convex lens that bends light inwards. And this bending of light inwards creates magnification, which will make a small object appear bigger. Okay, let me point out some stuff, um, some pieces of a microscope. This black thing up top, this is called the eyepiece. And this is what you actually look through. So you put your eye near or on the eyepiece and you're able to see what's underneath the microscope. In blue, I have circled the objective lenses. These are lenses that you can change to make an object look bigger or smaller. So this is a compound lens because a compound lens has more than one lens and this microscope has three lenses. And they all hang out on this rotating disc and they're called objective lenses. All right, so we gotta do a little math. 
To figure out how much an object is magnified under the microscope, follow this equation. Total magnification equals the eyepiece lens times the objective lens. The eyepiece lens, remember that's the lens that you actually put your eye through and look through, is always 10. So if you're using a 10 objective lens, you're going to set up your equation like this. Total magnification equals 10 times 10, which equals 100. So I can say that when I'm using the 10 objective lens, the object that is underneath my microscope is magnified 100 times by the lenses. All right, so sometimes when you look underneath a microscope, it is blurry. Like when you try to take a picture on your uh, phone, but maybe the camera is focusing on you know, the tree behind your friend instead of your friend's face and your friend's face is blurry. So when this happens, when you're looking underneath the microscope, you can move the object closer or farther to, to the lenses to make it clearer or sharper. So there are certain microscopes that let you see small objects more clearer. The better or stronger the microscope is to see an object, more clearly is called the resolution. So if you really want to study something in, in detail, you need a high resolution microscope. A microscope with the highest resolution that you can possibly get is called an electron microscope. And it uses tiny particles called electrons to see objects in great detail. So let's look at an example. This is the same object. It is a very small piece of algae. That's that green stuff that grows on top of ponds. And on the left, it's underneath a compound microscope. And you can see it's very blurry. But on the right, it is underneath an electron microscope. And you can see it in way, way, way more details. And you can actually see that there are little holes. Um, and you couldn't see that underneath a compound microscope. Okay, guys, that is it for our two summaries. Remember that you need to go back and finish the two quizzes and also the acceptable use Nearpod. Uh, let me know if there's any questions, and I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow.